Hello, everyone. I'm really excited to talk about something that has been in on my mind throughout this year. Um, I This year has been crazy, right? <laughs> With generative AI and XJS 13 uh, app router, I think we've all had a lot of fun, right? And for I, I this this entire talk is about the experiences I have had, which felt like, did I really just do what I really just did? Especially when it came to streaming, right? And that's what I'm going to talk about. How do you stream full stack UI and with uh, and build a generative AI application on top of it? So streaming both AI and UI with Next.js and with something that I've been working on called Langscript.dev. So who am I? I am Ahmed Oves. I love the web platform and the purple color. Uh, maybe some of you are using my shades of purple code theme. I thank you for that. I've written a lot of software on VP of Developer Relations, uh, Google Developers, and Dev Networks AI ML Advisory Board member. And throughout all of this, you know, uh, uh, things that I have done, I've written a lot of software, right? And um, I, I believe millions of developers are using my code globally, and also it has made it to Mars through NASA's Ingenuity, you know, helicopter mission that I got to contribute to. But throughout all of this software, I think what there's a generational shift happening nowadays. And that makes me super excited, especially for web developers. I believe the generative AI is single-handedly not only going to improve, but increase the amount of work, you know, the amount of uh, you know progress we are going to make on the web platform. And that makes me super, super happy. So without further ado, let's dive in. We only have 10 minutes here. So I'm going to be quick, and I'm going to be talking about some of the key concepts that I've faced, experienced, and built on top of when using the Next.js app router in generative AI applications in production, right? So blocking versus streaming. Time to choose streaming for both UI and AI, right? And definitely Next.js to the rescue. Uh, how 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 streaming works is something you need to know before we begin, right? So on the left side here, you see this is a blocking UI. And on the right side here, you see that this is a streaming UI, right? Uh, a blocking UI is a UI which is blocked until we receive the full response. Imagine this is a text response, and when we fetch the entire thing, that is when we show it on the screen, right? But the streaming UI is different. Streaming UI is whenever we receive any small chunk of data, we start streaming it through HTTP streams back to whatever framework we are building on. We are building on Next.js, and with the capabilities we have in the Next.js app router version 13, it becomes super, super easy to use that streaming layer with React suspense and loading UI fallback, right? So <laughs> what am I talking about? So before we go there, uh, let's let's just quickly see what are the Streams API, right? So Stream API is not new. It has existed for quite some time. You fetch some data, and to oversimplify this concept, uh, the chunks of data are sent to you. And you can process that data, and then these chunks of data are sent to your client, right? Which is our UI or UI framework like Next.js. And then you can use that to render that data. There's also an excellent article on web.dev by Thomas on uh, it's like a definitive guide on streams. I definitely recommend that you go through this. It has all the core concepts discussed, like what are the chunks, single pieces of data, right? Readable, writable streams, trans and how do you transform streams? Uh, all things about back pressure and stuff like this, <laughs> which is probably you know a little bit outside the this you know uh, talk right now. But I definitely want you to go and read how streams work, so you can really enjoy and you can really use the powerful uh, APIs that are now available to the web platform. And why are we actually talking about this? I think the biggest shift that has happened is throughout this year is generative AI. Um, I believe uh, Chat GPT has been able to generate more than a billion dollars in revenue. So, you know, this generative AI is not a fad, in my opinion. It is generating actual revenue and actual value. Both Mid Journey and GitHub Copilot have generated more than 100 million in revenue. If my, you know, uh, recollection of loss isn't misleading me. So, it's now more than ever a really good time to learn about how these things are working and use them to build awesome projects, right? And one thing you will learn in ChatGP for, you know, uh, if you're using OpenAI's API in their API reference is that 
they allow you to have stream data. You know, um, GPT, generative AI, is a type of transformer. It is using multi-head, uh, you know, self-attention um, algorithm to generate each text. It works in cycles, right? It uses the prompt that you send it, the query, and it generates the next word. And then it uses your query, the next word, and generates another word. And then it uses that word and the word that it generated before. And it goes in, uh, again and again in this cycle of generating different words, right? And it's amazing how you know uh, it is able to just generate it's most of the times something really good, right? But instead of so when you know if when uh, something like this AI inference is happening, something like uh, you know a large language model is generating text for you, you can choose to you know wait while that generation completes, which could take I don't know anywhere from ten to forty seconds, or since it is you know generating that text, you can start streaming that AI inference, that response, that text. You can start streaming that data through HTTP streams to your you know, framework, which could be uh, Next.js, and then render it using React Suspense on top of uh, you know, your client. And the user can start looking at that data right away instead of like waiting 30, 40 seconds for the entire generation to be completed. That is why I think streaming is so much more important. And how it works uh, in Next.js is because of the app router. I know it, I, I just said that uh, streams have always sort of existed, but I think the convenience and the developer and user experience of building, uh, loading UIs and streaming is mind-blowing when it comes to Next.js app router. And uh, while building this, I just a little bit of gotcha here, right? Uh, <laughs> I can't believe... I personally used to, uh, you know, build Nexus after the page, pages directory. So much more powerful and easier with loading UI and streaming and all of the things that App Router enables us to do. So let's quickly see what we are talking about here. So imagine this is your blog, and here are your blog posts, and this is the content that is going to be loaded, right? So now with Nexus App Router, what you can do is in a segment, let's say this dashboard segment, you can have a loading.js file or loading.ts file if you're a TypeScript fan like me. And in this file, you can create a loading skeleton, right? something that shows some sort of fake UI that uh, signifies that something is loading. Right? What Next.js will do for you is on uh, you know segment level that it will use that loading.js file, wrap your page in a suspense wrapper. Suspense is coming from you know latest version of React and add that as a component to the fallback of the suspense wrapper. Basically, your entire page will have this component loaded before you have the pages data actually rendered, right? And this will help users understand, like even with SSR, there used to be, you know, when the server was working, there used to be a delay when uh, you, people used to hack around different UIs, a loading spinner or whatnot to showcase, well, you are actually navigating from one page to another, but our server is kind of working and sending you data. Now with uh, the app router and latest version of React, you can just use this loading.js file and Suspense will take care of all of that for you. But things really uh, you know, start to happen in a good way when you start working with streams, right? But before we go there, you need to understand how server-side rendering works. So first, all of the data is fetched on the server then the server renders an HTML page and finally sends it to the client. And client renders a non-interactive version of that page. And finally, React hydrates and the user can interact with that, right? And if you look at the timeline of all of this, you can see server is fetching data on the server side. And then it is being rendered. And then, uh, you know, it's taking a lot of time to load that content on the client. And finally, it's getting hydrated. With streams, what you can do is, instead of sending all of your data collectively, what you can do is you can start sending selective components. Let's say you have a user profile component, you have a weather update component, and you have a list of blogs and a list of clients and a list of customers. You can have different components for each of those. Each React server component will be streamed in, right? Whenever, let's say your uh, you know, documents or your customers or your clients, each of these could be these, right? So your clients uh, got rendered first, 
because it was uh, in our short list and then another component and then another component. And while this is happening, you can use suspense to show a loading UI. All of this sounds really, really easy, but man, it's so powerful, right? And ultimately it will take shorter time. And the user who is using your uh, website, the web app that you are building, will have a better experience as, you know, uh, all of these components will be streamed in parallel, as you can see here. Um, so uh, I won't leave you here. Uh, I'll be actually showing you a small demo of what I'm, I'm working on. And uh, for that, I'm using Lang UI. It's a beautiful components uh, library for your AI projects. If you want to build a clone for ChatGPT, you can use it. It's very, uh, it uses Tailwind uh, behind the scene, and it's very similar to Shad and UI, which we are all using nowadays, right? Uh, it's all copy paste components. Uh, you don't install anything at all. For example, it has prompt containers. Uh, everything is responsive and everything. Uh, it has um, history panels. It has you know your prompt input layouts and whatnot, and even you know complete sidebar layouts, which were really really handy right? with both the light and the dark modes. Right? So using Lang UI, um, I've been building this thing called Lang Script. Uh, in LangScript, uh, while it's not out there, I've been working with a few of awesome folks on it. Feel free to, you know, uh, go to langscript.dev and join the waitlist. But I'm really excited to demo it to you. It's built on top of modern uh, full stack UI framework, the Next.js app router. It uses both uh, streaming for everything, right? For both UI and AI. Right now, as you can see, there are lots of messages here uh, in this message thread. But if I am going to uh, write another one, uh, for example, uh, what's up? I know it's a silly message. You will see that AI will start streaming that response right here, right? As you can see, a bunch of things were streamed, all of this text chunks, and uh, they were rendered in front of you right here. A couple of more things happened as well. The Next.js conf thread jumped from here to the top. For example, if I go to Next.js users guide, you can see it's here. And if I talk to it, mm, Tell me more. You will see it will jump to the top right there. How crazy is that? It's even more, uh, you know, visible when you're uh, starting a new chat thread. For example, I'm going to ask it another silly question. Who is Emma West, right? So don't look on the right side. Look on the left side here. We are going to stream a response on the right side, and then we are going to add a title without refreshing the page and whatnot, right? So here, you, uh, here, here it goes, right? Uh, pressing enter, look over here, identifying MLOS, right? <laughs> it happened right there and then, right? Without any data loading, without any refresh or whatnot. It's just so amazing. It's like, you know how Apple says, oh, so pro? That is how I feel about uh, both UI and AI streaming coked in um, and to build amazing, convenient user experience like this, right? Uh, well, that that's pretty much it, right? <laughs> As you can uh, see, I'm pretty excited about all of this. And um, I want you people to go ahead and start experimenting with both generative AI and streaming UIs. It's not complicated. I think you, you, we, we can all use better user experience and building new apps like these. And I'm always around. I'm, uh, you know, I'm gonna um, on, on Twitter. I'm gonna post a link of the slides and everything on Twitter. So feel free to ask any questions. Um, with that, see ya. Thanks for listening. Bye.